This is the Horror King, Vinny Marcellia, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. You're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio, featuring the interactive interview, courtesy of WrestlingEpicenter.com. This is the king of the kingdom, Matt Taven, and don't be a Melvin, and get into the Wrestling Epicenter. Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. On the Newsmaker line with me right now is our third member of the kingdom over the past year. Don't know why we had him on last. I guess we saved the best for last. He is the king of horror, Vinny Marcellia. Mr. Marcellia, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, man. I, I love the character. I love the character that you're performing on Ring of Honor TV. It's it's uh, so different than some of the other characters we're seeing out there right now. So that's awesome stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. So here we are, an exciting time for Ring of Honor. We've got two major events happening really within three weeks of each other, and one of them has been on our calendars for almost a year now. Of course, I'm speaking of the 17th anniversary pay-per-view and then the big one, not that the 17th anniversary isn't big enough, and that is G1 Supercard of Honor at Madison Square Garden. It's part of Ring of Honor's roster. How do you feel about the momentum of Ring of Honor heading into these two huge events? Uh, yeah, great, man. Uh, you know, it's, uh, especially like, you know, the Madison Square Garden, you know, the anniversary, like you said, is big enough in its own. And then, uh, you got Madison Square Garden, uh, to follow it. And that's just, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's safe to say that it's, uh, almost every, uh, professional wrestler's dream to, you know, perform in, uh, in, in a building like Madison Square Garden. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, so much of wrestling history is in that building alone. And then, uh, you know, not only that, I mean, that building, uh, Madison Square Garden's mentioned in movies, uh, you know, you name it, uh, you know, being with the top, uh, one of the top places in the world, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, it's very exciting, uh, you know, leading up to that, uh, super card show. Uh, and then, and then, like you said, you know, we even got the anniversary show coming up. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, almost uh, definitely on the uh, the high rise for sure. Absolutely, and you're uh you the king of the kingdom. Matt Taven is involved in the main event of the 17th anniversary show. What might we see the rest of the kingdom be doing at the 17th anniversary show? Might we see you in the uh, corner of Taven? Um, you know, I'm not really sure if the uh you know what the plan is as far as for for me and uh, TK. Uh, you know, it would have been nice to to go in there for and perform for the uh, Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions and add that to the uh, you know uh, add that to the uh, to the list of uh, titles. But uh, you know, uh, no, I, I'm not sure exactly what myself and TK are, but I, I can you know I'm pretty sure we'll be in, in Matt's corner um, as far as his match with uh, Lethal for the uh, Ring of Honor title. So uh, there definitely is that. So we'll be rooting for Matt for that. Absolutely. And uh, my son is nine years old and he saw your ominous entrance when you put the uh, balloons from under the ring apron and they came up. And I think he was convinced <laughs> Pennywise, the dancing clown, was going to come from under the ring. <laughs> uh, what, was the, what was the inspiration behind the involving the red balloons as well as your your obvious love of horror movies? What was the uh, the inspiration behind the horror character? Um, I, I just, it, it's always, you know, it's always been a, a big part of me. Um, uh, you know, what you see is, is very much, uh, you know, the stuff that I love, uh, on top of pro wrestling, of course. Uh, so it was just, uh, you know, trying to figure out how to bring that into pro wrestling for, you know, people to kind of see that side of me. And, uh, once I kind of like figured out how to do that, uh, you know, it was just, it's just really, you know, having fun and just, being being myself and uh you know like you said earlier uh, just bring uh something different to wrestling i think uh well i i i hope that uh what i'm doing is just something different for people to enjoy as i feel like uh you know my the things that i like is i share i share the same likeness with uh, many people who are wrestling fans as well uh you know and uh you know i've always been a big fan of uh like the devil's rejects and uh, all the, and especially all the, like, you know, uh, documentaries and different horror stories and even like the older, older black and white horror movies. Uh, so there's been a lot of inspiration uh, in, in a whole that kind of inspiring to do this. But, uh, 
you know, ever since I was a little kid, man, like I loved pro wrestling and, and horror films and, you know, it was always like, you know, wanted to be in a horror film, which I actually ended up doing, um, which comes out this year, which is The Find, which would be available on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Uh, I'm actually played play the role of the, the serial killer in the film uh, named Damon. So, uh, you know, that was a goal that I kind of always wanted to have. And, you know, it, that as well as being a professional wrestler, and now that I'm a professional wrestler and, and able to bring in, you know, the stuff that I love as far as the horror genre into wrestling, you know, it, it's it's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, like there's been plenty of movies that have kind of, uh, plenty of characters, plenty of movies that have kind of like inspired me uh, as far as that. But, um, and I feel like it's all, it's all, you know, coming to, coming to, uh, Coming, coming all together, you know, finally, <laughs> as far as like uh, the performance of it. And, uh, you know, I hope people are enjoying it. You know, some people are not going to enjoy it, but that's just, uh, you know, that's the, that's the nature of that. So it is what it is. I, I did hear you talking about the um, about the movie in another interview. Um, is this something that you wanted to do? Did you want to branch out into acting or did it kind of just come to be? Um, It was, you know, I always wanted to be a pro wrestler. Um, That was my, you know overall goal but you know i've always being so involved in uh in the movies you know uh which my my mother kind of started with with me at a young age i always loved she always loved horror films and she's the one who got me kind of involved with it so it's always been uh you know i always loved movies and uh but my, my main goal was always to be a pro wrestler uh but once the uh opportunity presented itself um you know, I definitely couldn't say no to it. You know, it was funny too because you know they're like, "I oh, will see the script. We're interested in you, and we're interested in you and being in this horror film, and you'd be the killer." You know, I was, just, I said yes right away. I mean, you know, I'm not really gonna, you know, whatever the script is, it is. But uh, I ended up reading after, of course, and it was great. But like, you know, it, you know, the answer right away is was yes uh, for that opportunity. But uh, it was cool, man. I got to. to to live on the like basically live in the mansion that we were filming in for like two weeks and, and did all the filming it was really cool it was like a vampire for two weeks it was kind of strange where i just slept all day and filmed all night but it was uh it was pretty wild man so if you're a fan and, and you're not in the movie are you gonna think this movie is cool is that gonna be good for the uh for, for your type of horror movie as far as the film that i did yeah yes sir uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it, like, to me, if I can relate it to any type of movie, uh, out there, it had a very, like, uh, uh, I guess you could say, like, Scream, like the movie Scream, I don't know if you've ever seen it or yeah, not, absolutely. but, uh, it, it had, it kind of has, like, a feel like that, um, uh, but it has more about, it, it's more about a, uh, ancient, like, Indian tribe, like, back in the day, it's related to that, but the, the concept, you know, in modern day, with the kids, uh, at a college party and a winter break, and then I ended up being there. It's kind of like that same feel that like the movie Scream had. Very cool, very cool. Now you mentioned Rob Zombie. He was, of course, Devil's Rejects, uh, the guy who made the mind behind Devil's Rejects. Yeah. A little bit of a look, a little bit of a maybe rub off look on, on onto yourself a little bit. I would say. I know he's a big wrestling fan. Have you ever talked to Rob Zombie? I actually have never talked to Rob Zombie, but I am a big fan of Rob Zombie's music. Um, I actually saw Manson and um, Zombie together recently uh, at the Twins of Evil tour, and uh, man, like that, what a performance by both guys! Uh, you know, and uh, it was amazing. You know, still to this day, I mean, those guys are those guys are a little bit older now, you know, but uh, they. they it's, it's, the performance still blew me away, man, and uh, it, it was great. And uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of of Zombie's work. Uh, I love his films. I love like how the you know the music transitions over to his his filmmaking. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's got a lot of cool movies. Uh, big fan of The Devil's Rejects. Uh, uh, big fan of the whole like Firefly uh, family there. It's kind of funny that you mentioned Devil's Rejects because our guest this week was supposed to be a guy who was in the movie, DDP. <laughs> he, oh, he blew okay. us off for a week, and uh, <laughs> so we ended up having you on, and we still talked about Devil's Rejects. So okay, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So the Kingdom are three very different guys that obviously have a very common bond as well. Um, TK, obviously an ex-baseball player. Uh, yourself with the horror, uh, the horror king, and then, of course, Matt Taven is the king of the kingdom. 
what makes this group mesh so well and come off as such a cohesive unit, even though you got three different, very different personalities? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this is a question that's been asked a couple times, too. And I think it, uh, you know, it comes down to with us, you know, we're, we're it, it's real. Uh, we're, we're real friends outside of the ring. Everything, you know, uh, we, we, I started training with Taven God 10 years ago. I've known T- Taven for over 10 years. Uh, so we, we came up together in wrestling and then we come to the same school, the Spike Dudley Lockup Academy. That's in uh, Fall River, Massachusetts. And then uh, TK came through the same school later on. So we have that, we all have the same training under our belt. And then, uh, you know, we're real, real friends, close friends outside the ring, uh, inside the ring. So the chemistry is just very natural. And uh, I just think, you know, that's why it works so well is that, uh, you know, what you see is real, you know. And, um, and, and we're all, you know, we've all evolved into our own uh, nowadays. So, uh, yeah, that it just comes down to that. It's very real, you know. We're, we're real friends. We travel together. We train together. Uh, you know, we we show up together. We leave together. You know, it's it's a very uh, it's a very real thing. Very cool. And the Kingdom's six man tag team titles. There seems to be some new challengers in the uh, in the works for you guys. What is your take on the formation uh, a couple months ago of Villain Enterprises? What do you think of those three guys as a unit? Uh, it's, it's interesting. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, uh, PCO, I, I believe he may not be human. <laughs> very, very interesting, uh, very interesting performer. Uh, and then Brody King is, a, is an absolute monster and then you got a, the villain there. So I think, uh, I think it's a, definitely a team that, uh, you'll be seeing, you know, the kingdom, you've already got a little taste of it. Uh, but I, I do believe that uh, we'll see um, numerous matches between the Kingdom and Villain Enterprises, and and I think they'll be good. I think so too. And another potential six-man partnership could uh, be the uh, yeah. guys from the Lifeblood, which has kind of sprung up from the uh, the new wave of talent coming into Ring of Honor. What is your take right, on all right. these new guys coming on in? I, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's interesting. I think, uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's great. I think, you know, uh, it gives, uh, the ring of honor, the ring of honor fans to see a lot of new faces, a lot of new talent that they probably might've wanted seen in ring of honor. And, uh, it just, it just gives everybody a chance to see some new uh, matches that they've always wanted to see, uh, including, you know, the kingdom versus villain enterprises, I think is uh, something that's very interesting, you know, especially, uh, you know, going head to head for the ring of honor world, six man tag titles, which we are the three time ring of honor world, six man tag titles, might I add in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it gives a chance you know, for the ring of honor audience to see, you know, like I said, some guys that they've always wanted to see perform in ring of honor. And, uh, you know, I think, like I said earlier in the interview, I think, uh, Ring of Honor is definitely on the, on the on the high rise, and everything's uh, you know looking good for the future. Absolutely, and uh, we mentioned this earlier on, but everything has been leading towards the MSG show, at least you know on a fan's calendar, just to see uh, NJPW and Ring of Honor work together in probably the most famous arena in the entire world has just been you know something we've all been waiting to see. But my thought is kind of to go past that after we get the G1 Supercard in the books. What do you think will be the next thing that the, our Ring of Honor fans and talent will be eyeing as the next big hurdle to cross? Uh, that's, I I don't, you know what I mean? Uh, that's a good question. That's not, that's not a bad question at all. That's a very good question. I just, I don't have the answer to that because I feel like uh, everything's so, everybody's so excited for that Supercard at Madison Square Garden. So it's, so it's, uh, it, it's hard to say. And, uh, you know, I, that, that's, that's, I'm looking forward to that more than anything right now. So, uh, it's kind of hard to give like a, an answer on that. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. It's a good question though. Very good. Any idea if you're going to be officially on that card yet? Um, I have no idea. I haven't heard much about it. I haven't heard much about it, but, um, you know, Mm -hmm. always check under the ring, you know what I mean? So (laughs) you never know where I'm going to be. Very good. Very good. All right. So, Probably the least favorite question that a Ring of Honor guy gets asked right now is um, <laughs> departure of the 
of the elite and the formation of AEW. Um, a lot of a lot of course is being made of it. Um, as a Ring of Honor guy, how do you feel about their departure, and um, how do you think that it ha- impacts Ring of Honor at the moment, as well as the entire wrestling industry, to have this um, highly funded AEW brand um, coming up and, and, and being formed? I mean, uh, I think that you know it's uh, you know losing those guys. Uh, you know, everything everything seems to be okay now. Uh, you know, but you know, good for them, you know, wanting to, to go out and, and try their own thing. And, uh, it looks like, you know, to me as they're succeeding with it. And, uh, I think it gives some other people some opportunity that may not have had it anywhere else to actually, you know, go out and perform. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, every, we're still fine in ring of honor, you know, and, and we'll still, you know, definitely prove that we're still the best wrestling on the planet. Um, but, you know, uh, I mean, I, I really don't, you know, everything's been fine. So I don't really have much to say on that. <laughs> no problem at all. So like we said, there's three. Yeah, I guess, I guess I guess I, I can understand. You asked that question a lot, huh? <laughs> I, guess I have this to, way, but Yeah, that's a tough kind of... question to answer, man. You know what I mean? Because it's like kudos to those guys for trying their own thing and making it work. So you can't really, you know. <laughs> It's kind of like one of those things where I know that that's not something that I know Ring of Honor wants me to ask, but it's kind of a, if I don't ask it, I'm going to hear from our listeners like, why didn't you ask about this? So kind of one of those things you just got to do and you hate doing it. It's kind of like when you interview a uh, former WWE guy. Would you ever go back? You you have to ask it even though you don't want to. Well, I mean, like I said, Ring of Honor is okay. We're doing fine. And, you know, like I said, Ring of Honor is on the high rise. I agree with you. I agree with you. So we mentioned three very different personalities in the kingdom. Uh, of course, one of those being the real world champion, Matt Taven. Do you have any aspirations towards chasing singles gold? Uh, absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, it is a goal of mine to become uh, the Ring of Honor uh, World Television Champion. Uh, you know, on Slap Power TV on that label there, and uh, yeah, so that's definitely a a goal of mine. Um, you know, I think there's more to show for each of us um, as, as singles competitors, um, as as well as tag team competitors. So that is that is a goal of mine that I've always had uh, is becoming the Ring of Honor World Television Champion. Beautiful man. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time. We're all looking forward to, especially. I hate to say this because it almost seems like everybody, including the company, might even be overlooking the 17th anniversary pay per view, but. Everybody's looking forward to the 17th anniversary pay-per-view and, of course, the G1 Super Card of Honor from Madison Square Garden. should be an incredible three-week period here coming up for you in the next month and a half. So I can't wait to, for you guys to, uh, to see what happens then when you guys finally are doing it. Absolutely. All right. Before I let you go, do you mind if I ask for one last favor from you? Sure. Do you mind if I ask for a station ID just saying this is Vinny Marcellia and you're listening to... Interactive Wrestling Radio? Sure. <laughs> when are we ready? Good? Yeah, I was going to say, did you want me to do the whole countdown thing? I, I could do that if you want. Like. Oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll just do it. This is the Horror King, Vinny Marcellia, and you're listening to Interactive Wrestling Radio. Hey, this is TK Orion, man. You are in the wrestling episode. This is the Wrestling Epicenter. For over 15 years, we've brought you the top names in professional wrestling for exclusive interviews. Everybody you see here has been interviewed by our site. But we're more than just interviews. So be sure and check out WrestlingEpicenter.com for news, results, information, and of course our store. WrestlingEpicenter.com, your number one source for wrestling information.